Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are out in the greenhouse starting the pre-sprouting process on some ranunculus corms. What I'm hoping to do is start them early enough that I could have some near bloom stage when we're ready to plant spring containers. I've grown ranunculus in several different areas, in containers where I've bought the ranunculus down at the garden center, somebody else has grown them on, which is what I'm hoping to do this year. I want to be the one who grows them on for my containers. I've had them in raised beds. In fact, it was two years ago, I think. I had them in a couple of our raised beds up here and they were so incredibly gorgeous. I almost couldn't even bring myself to cut any because they look like giant bouquets. And then last year I grew them out in our big cut flower garden and I did two different crops of them, uh, which was really interesting. So I wanna go over the dates of when I started things. Uh, keep in mind, I garden in a zone six. Our average last frost date is right around the first week of May. Basic information about ranunculus, they are a cool season flower. Uh, they don't like the heat of summer, they will start to fizzle out when it starts to get too hot. They are perennial in zones eight through 10. And in those zones, typically they're planted in the fall for spring blooms, but for zones like mine, zone six, so it'd be zone seven or under, you would have to dig them up and store them, but there's really nothing special about the storing process. You just dig up the corms, cut off the tops and store them in a brown paper sack somewhere where they're gonna be out of direct sunlight and kept dry. So for us, we have them in a, just a crate and I have each individual variety in brown paper sacks. They stay in our root cellar for the winter and they look dead. <laughs> when you start, when you get ready to, uh, you know, start this whole pre-sprouting process, they're all hard and dried up and you think that there's no life left in them, but it's amazing how they just, I don't, they plump up in this process right here, which we'll go through and they just start putting on growth pretty pretty quickly. They typically bloom about 90 days after you get them planted and then they'll bloom for about four to six weeks. So it's a pretty long uh, bloom period, I think for a cool season annual. And if you have a succession planting of them, like I did last year, you extend that out a whole lot more. I think I had four more weeks of blooms than if I would have planted them all at the same time. Also, they have about a 10 to 12 day vase life, which is pretty amazing. I think that's a pretty long vase life for a flower like this. And they're just perfection. The structure of the flower is so pretty. So let me show you what I've got going on behind me here. And then I'll talk through the process of getting them pre-soaked and planted. I've got four different varieties of ranunculus soaking here. This container is a variety called Violet. This one is Telecoat Yellow. They're a lot smaller. It's interesting. We've got white with a question mark. <laughs> These are some of the ones we stored last year, so I'm hoping they're all white. And it's crazy, the difference already. They've only been in the water for about an hour. And the soaking process is three to four hours, you guys. And then this variety is called marshmallow, and it's one of my favorites. And then right over here, we have Russell, and the rest of our ranunculus right here. And then I've got some other things, some anemones and freesia bulbs right here, which we'll do later but I'm planning on doing these in three different batches. Today's batch will be for our spring containers and the next two will be for the cut flower garden, hoping to get two different um, crops, you know, at two different times. Isn't this crazy? I mean, you don't even have to store them in anything. They're just loose in these bags and they just look like death. Like if I saw that sitting out in the garden, if I didn't know what it was, I would totally pick it up <laughs> thinking it was, it was done. Do you need some love? Always. They don't want direct light though, so we're gonna make sure that these are closed up and these will go back inside today. When you are soaking your corms, uh, so three to four hours is how long it takes and you want to use room temperature water. So I did bring some water in from the kitchen because our water from the hose is pretty darn cold. Uh, so we've got room temp water going and you do wanna go along and stir it every once in a while so the water doesn't sit still. You wanna create some oxygen in there. So I like every 30 minutes or so, I just come around and give it a little bit of a stir. Uh, if you can keep it in an area where you can let like a steady stream, like a little trickle of water go into the container, that's even better. But I haven't found that to be necessary. I just read that in some of the guides just to keep oxygen in the water at all times. Just stir them up. Keep a label in there. <laughs> Otherwise, well, I always forget. Even if I only have four varieties, I forget. No matter when you're planting your ranunculus, step number one is to soak them for three to four hours. So we'll come back here when they're all done soaking and I will show you the next step. All right, it's been about three and a half hours. So I wanted to show you what these corms are looking like. So much different than when we first started out. Like these clumps right here, this is what they look like when we started. Side by side this thing. 
Look at how much they plump up. They look so much better, a much healthier color. And once they're kind of hydrated like this, they're much easier to separate. So like with this clump right here that we grew last year, it multiplied. So we're gonna just ease them apart gently. Whoop. And it looks like this one turned into three. I think this was probably the one we planted last year and that one has uh, grown in size. And then it sent off these two side shoots right here. So we've multiplied our crop, which is awesome. You do wanna make sure not to over soak your corn. So three to four hours max, set a timer, get them out of the water and then get them in their trays to pre-sprout, which is the next step. It sounds involved, but it really isn't. I'm gonna go ahead and prep my trays. I've got two 11 by 22 trays. I hope they all fit in these. I'm gonna put a little layer of soil at the bottom and then line up my corn. So let's do that. I also learned in this process that this uh, saucer is no longer watertight. <laughs> There's a leak somewhere. This is what the corms look like all lined up in your tray. You can put them side by side because this part we're just getting them going and then we're gonna be taking them out of the tray to pot them up. Uh, I did cut apart the saucer that's not working anymore. It's not holding water to create my little barriers so I could keep my varieties separate. So we've got violet here, marshmallow, telecoat yellow, and then this whole flat, which is finished, I put the soil on top is full of the white, which there were 91 corms. Okay. So I'm gonna take my soil and just put a light layer over the top of all of these, just making sure that they're covered. That way they won't dry out. And then I'm gonna lay my labels right on top. That's my fancy label made from the saucer as well. Okay, so let's talk about planting process. This is probably gonna be a little bit more geared toward zone seven and lower, uh, because in zone eight, you can plant them in the fall and just leave them in the ground. So it's very different for those of us who have to be mindful of the temperature uh, with this particular crop. So your first option is to pre-soak your corms and you always should do that no matter how you decide to plant them. Uh, you need to rehydrate those corms. So do that and then if the weather's good enough, you can plant them straight out in your garden. You just have to make sure that those corms are not gonna be subjected to temperatures below 28 degrees Fahrenheit. That's kind of their threshold. They will rot if they are subjected to that. Russell just jumped up onto the table next to me. Hey, dude. Just because it's dipping down to 28 degrees Fahrenheit doesn't mean you necessarily can't plant your corms. Because you're putting them underneath the soil surface, that does offer some protection, but you just wanna be fairly mindful of the temperatures. The second option is you can soak your corms and then you can pre-sprout your corms before you plant them out. So if your temperatures are still a little bit too cold, you can go ahead and soak them. You can do the pre-sprout process for a couple of weeks like we're gonna do now, and that buys you a little bit of time and gives your plants a head start and then you can put them out in the ground. Uh, and then again, just be mindful of temperature. If the temperature dips for some reason, just have a piece of you know cloth, garden cloth available that you can protect the corms with. And then the third option, which is what I've done last year and then again this year, is you can soak your corms, pre-sprout them, pot them up in a warm, bright spot like a greenhouse, like this one here, and you could try to grow them on a little bit so you can have even earlier blooms. And so I'm kind of doing that doubly this year. I'm doing this batch for the pots and then our second batch for an early bloom outside. And then we'll have our regular batch go in that will bloom 
usually they bloom like first couple of weeks of June and that's normal time for them. But last year with the way I planted them, I had blooms in May through most of June. It was awesome. Just to give you an idea, the first time I planted ranunculus kind of in mass from corms was in our raised beds. And I started the pre-sprout process on March the 1st. And then I planted them in our raised beds on March 13th. And then I put hoops up, those super hoops with some uh, garden cloth and kept them a little bit warmer than the ambient temperature outside. Uh, and they did beautifully. I probably kept that cloth on until mid April or so, so about a month, uh, kept them protected. And I think that that helped them along too, but we, just enjoyed the heck out of them. And I would love to fill, I can see my, the garden from here. So I keep looking over there. I would love to fill up every single one of the, oh, geez. I just got stung by a bee. Oh my goodness, on the leg. Where did that come from? Ow, that just stung me right on my leg. Oh my goodness. I haven't been stung by a bee in so long. And of course I get stung in the middle of the winter. Looks like Cheddar's gonna take care of it. Anyway, I don't know where I was at. <laughs> I think I was talking about the ranunculus in the raised bed garden and how I would love to pack out that whole space with ranunculus one year. I think that would be the most beautiful thing ever. I would have to forfeit spring crops up there, but we could plant those somewhere else. And then last year I started earlier. I uh, noted the dates down because I didn't want to forget, but I started my first pre-sprout process with half of the corms I had on hand, which I had saved from the year prior. I started that process the first week of February, and then I came in here on February the 25th, about a couple weeks later, and uh, we potted them all up in little four inch containers, and I grew them on here in the greenhouse because at that point, February 25th, still too early for us to put them outside. And then on March about the 12th, I started my second batch. The second half of the corms that I had, I started them in the pre-sprout process. They were in trays. And then when they were ready on March the 26th, I came in, I grabbed all of the pre-sprouted corms and then all of the plants I had growing on in here. And we planted them all out in the cut flower garden. And I think I did that in a video for you guys. So I had like the first part of the row were all the plants that I had pre-grown from in here. And then the second half of the row was, you couldn't see anything yet because it was just the corms underneath the soil surface. So that first batch of ranunculus, they you know were beautiful and glorious earlier on in the season. It was sometime in May, they started to really I go for it with blooms. And then that second batch started to bloom first part of June, June and they bloomed through the rest of June. It was really wonderful. So now I'm hoping to have this batch for April, my second batch for May, and then my third batch for June. I hope that all made sense. I try to be as organized as I can and I always feel like I forget something, but that is what my plan is for this year. I did forget to mention that when I planted them all out in the cut flower garden on March 26th last year, I had a bunch of super hoops set up already out there and we covered all of them with garden cloth. It was just a very thin cloth. I had a heck of a time keeping it attached because we have so much wind, but I wanted to make sure to keep them a little bit warmer, keep them protected. And we left that on for as long uh, as I was able to until it kind of tore to shreds. And the last thing is fertilization. So, you know, I don't add anything into the soil when I'm growing them in here. Once I pot these up and grow them on, I will start feeding them probably a liquid fertilizer of some kind just to, you know, amp up uh, their performance. But out in the cut flower garden, what I usually do when I plant a new crop is I go in with Land and Sea Compost Biotone Starter Fertilizer. I heavily amend the soil before I even plant. Then we plant the stuff in there and typically I don't fertilize another time after that. They just go for it at that point. Um, and then once the ranunculus are done blooming, I leave the foliage on, I leave them out there until they start to die back, kind of like spring bulbs, uh, because they're soaking in energy and feeding those corms, giving them all the energy they need to do the same thing the next year. And also they've been multiplying, you know, they've been growing and multiplying and you want to give those corms as much energy uh, and as much of a boost as you can. So we wait till those leaves are yellowing or dying back and then we cut those off, dig up the corms, dry them out for a couple of days and then stick them in the bags and wait again to do it the next year. Uh, you can store corms in a uh, just a cool, dry, dark place for up to eight months. And it's about that long between when we dry them out, get them into storage, and when I plant my third batch of corm. So they really do store for quite a long time. And you guys, that is it for today's video. I hope it was helpful for those of you who want to try growing ranunculus. They truly are an easy flower to grow. They haven't been bothered by any kind of insect uh, yet. I mean, knock on wood. 
Not that that's <laughs> going to help, but maybe. Uh, so, yeah, they've never been afflicted by anything. They just perform, do their thing, and then they're just easy. You know, you dig them up. The corms are so small, it's not hard to dig them up at all. It's like a hand tool job. Uh, so it's just been a really high-performing, amazing plant in our garden. I will bring you along when I get ready to pop these out of the tray and pot them up in here. So anyway, we'll be doing that in a couple of weeks. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.